Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome back to Shelf Stories, the channel that sells tales from gays, books, and life. I'm your host, Jason Thank you So much for stopping by to this follow-up video uh, based on my uh, Lost Ruins of Arnak Case Files Culture Review. Uh, the feedback has been crazy. <laughs> uh, here I am in my home office and you know all the, all the stuff, right? There you go. Parenthood, wonderful. Uh, and I've been very online today. Uh, I've been, you know, uh, answering the 1.1k 1. 1, uh, views, somewhere around there, which in the grand scheme of things doesn't sound like a lot. Uh, but imagine 1.1k 1. 1. people talking to you and having reactions. It's not the kind of video you just kind of put on and ingest and move on. It's you sit with it and you process it and you react to it, good or bad. Uh, not all the uh, bad reactions are super great or even worse. Uh, commenting on, I've, I've commented on them before, uh, most of them uh, actually. But there's one thread I want to pick up. I want to hear your thoughts on this. It's the idea of fiction. Uh, what is fiction? What's the line between fiction and reality? And what is the author's uh, rights and responsibilities uh, in that complex? So first, fiction. I think a lot of commenters uh, that were critical uh, went along this line of, you know, I'm not being fair. I mentioned in the video that Arnak is based on a fiction, but, you know, I kind of moved on to the cultural stuff pretty fast. And it's like, okay, that's that's the, that's the thing. You know, if, if Arnak wanted to be an historical game, it would have been an historical game, but it puts itself out as a fiction. So we should respect that. Respect the author's, uh, you know, desire to create this fantastical world and offer it to people as a way to escape. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, we need... <laughs> A good fiction in our lives. In fact, that's one of the things that makes us human is good fiction being transported. Uh, all that good stuff. And when someone like me weighs down the fiction and cultural, political analysis, then we're doing a disservice. Uh, so, you know, um, let the author create. And when the author borrows from different cultures, well, then they're borrowing their own version of the culture. So if they make a, you know, alternate version of Egypt or South America, like Lovecraft did, or all these other people, when, uh, you know, Batman is in Gotham, Gotham isn't being another word for New York. <laughs> Here you go, right there, New York. Or uh, Spider-Man is actually set in New York. That They're not saying anything about the real New York. This fictional New York. Then let it just be fictional New York, New York, Gotham. Batman is just Batman. Spider-Man is just Spider-Man. Arnak is just Arnak. All right, it's not anything to do with real life. And you know, there's a maturity in that. Uh, you know, the maturity to be able to separate fiction from reality. And, and a lot of, uh, you know, um, different lines of argument along those uh, tracks. So here's where the problem is coming in. I just don't believe that. I just don't think that way. I think I'm frustrating some people because they want to say fiction and that means a certain thing to them. I just don't come at it from the same set of priors. For me, there's no such thing as a pure fiction. No such thing. Uh, you know, that's the way I was educated. You know, I was uh, you know, raised in critical theory in college and all sort of stuff. Uh, and just the way I read the world. Whenever, anytime I see a piece of fiction or a cultural piece, um, I always see the human underneath that. The human who has biases and baggage and whether they know it or not you know they put it in there whether they mean to create a straight allegory or whether they want to be a little bit more detached from reality there's always lines for me that, that is not a, a you know a controversial thing to me you know uh yes i'm gonna read thing terrible things white supremacy oppression and power dynamics and you know and, but i also read the good things too you know uh, there's the author has ideas about marriage and relationships and warfare and uh you know social dynamics and that all gets read in there too all of it because at the end of the day good fiction is about human stories what does the poet say the poet says that the only stories worth writing about are the human heart at war against itself and you know the humans desiring humans aspiring and whether we think of those humans as actual humans or whether they're anthropomorphic animals or aliens from outer space, you know, there's some kind of human resonance in there, emotional resonance. And whether it's emotional resonance and whether it's visual kind of cues and stuff, then there's the other things too. 
Those are one to one. I'm not looking for trouble. To me, the trouble is already there. <laughs> Uh, so it's a fundamental disagreement. It's an irreconcilable difference. You know, uh, getting into board games, when, when, when on the table, what are we looking at? I am looking at all the cultural pieces that are uh, influencing and present in the presentation of the board game. Someone else is seeing cardboard, wood, chits. <laughs> and it's a, just a fundamental difference in the way we think and way we philosophize about this whole thing of fiction. So let's talk about that. I want to hear what you think. I want to hear about how you approach that divide, that basic philosophical understanding, the line between fiction, how solid is that line, how blurry is that line for you. So now let's talk about the author. What are their rights and responsibilities and all that? That's where the rubber hits the road. That's, where, that's what really gets people going in terms of the argument. Uh, the idea being that in that former paradigm, you know, fiction and reality are separate. If the author is creating a fiction, then they should be free. You know, without constraint, let their creativity, uh, you know, boundless. <laughs> We're all better for it. Uh, because at the end of the day, their work can't create real world harm because there's that line. And when folks like me say, well, your work is harmful, your work has a difficult thing. Well, then I'm presupposing that there's no line between fiction and reality. And for a lot of people, there is a line. And so there should be wide range of freedom and rights allowed to the author. The fear being that if we don't preserve that, then we put the any creator in a, a position to self-censor. Uh, there was an uh, op-ed article in the New York Times that talked about self-censorship, and it, was not a, it wasn't a wonderfully written article or anything like that, uh, but the idea was very interesting to think about, uh, that you know, authors are so afraid of pissing people off, of saying the wrong thing, and so that they're not producing. Uh, and so it's like that we lose for that. And, I, I, you know, we're, we're, we're not as good human beings. We don't have as much to think about and to dream about and all that kind of stuff. So that's one paradigm. That's one way of understanding what the author is responsible for. And I want to be really clear. I do not advocate censorship. I'm a free speech person. I, On some level, I do agree with that. But I think there's some severe limits there especially when the author is borrowed from real-world cultures. Because I'm a person that does not believe in the clean separation between fiction and reality, because I'm a person that when someone borrows from a culture, they're really borrowing from it, they're representing it, and there is real-world uh, you know, resonance there, I think that the author should connect with people from other places uh, not just read about it, but connect with the people there and really check for difficult uh, reproduction of stereotypes and, you know, appropriations. Uh, you know, be willing to go through that process. And that's very scary sounding to people because that sounds like I'm setting up for a ban and a cancel. Well, you said he should do it. Well, he didn't do it. Are you going to ban him? Are you going to cancel him? Oh. <laughs> I I wish we could just set that whole banning and canceling aside. I don't want to ban and cancel a person. Uh, when I say should, it's not a legal thing. It's a moral thing. You know, we're humans in relationship with one another. I fully believe that the author should be in relationship with all of their audience. Not just the purchasers of the book, but the lands from which they're borrowing. I think there's a responsibility to present that with respect and authenticity. Not only is there a responsibility there, there is, the, the author can get more tales. <laughs> you know, they might expand their audience. So that's a whole different side of the argument. I'll go back to that responsibility piece. The, the, I think the author has a responsibility. They should connect with, you know, people from that culture. So, that sounds scary to people because of the whole banning of, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, you'll never be happy. It's like, well, the point isn't happiness. The point is authenticity. I think that on our side, even though there's this idea that we'll never be happy, I think we'll be happy with authenticity. We may not like it. You know, uh, we may not, we may criticize it. But if it's authentic and there's, and the people... Real people, not just the lands and the remixed fictional version of it, but the real people are visible in some way. I think that we're willing to rock with that. 
And if that doesn't happen, then criticism. Not cancellation, criticism, which is exactly what I did with Arnak or what I would do with the case files. So two lines, <laughs> right? Uh, first, the fiction piece, what's the line between fiction and reality? What, what do you think about that? And then what is the role of the author? What rights and responsibilities do they have? Do you emphasize their rights or are you one of the, are, do you want to emphasize their responsibilities a little bit more? I am definitely on the side of let's emphasize their responsibilities a little bit more, uh, too much. <laughs> let's get that balance going again between their rights and their responsibilities. I want to, I want to bring both into the conversation and not just talk about their rights. Uh, the, this video is long enough. I, I promised myself I wouldn't make this long, but you know me, I like to talk. And I like to listen. So talk, comments, all that good stuff. You can change your mind, you can change the world. Later, everybody.